Peter Elides with you. This is Stock Market Cycles Update for the week ending Friday, August 12th, being recorded on Saturday, August 13th. This update is being recorded for both our regular paying subscribers and as a YouTube update. We haven't done one of those for a long time. In fact, since right around the exact bottom that we call back in June. So it's time to do one for YouTube and we do one for our subscribers every market day. Speaking of subscribers, TradeStation has notified us that as of September, October of this year, they will no longer be supporting third-party applications. Well, our fabulous software, written by Stefan Scheuermann, a nice German lad, now living in Dubai, uh, that software has been available for purchase for a couple of years now. We're not quite sure what we're going to do come the September time period when TradeStation will no longer support third-party applications, but there are a couple of alternatives and we'd like some feedback from both our subscribers and from those of you that are watching YouTube that might be interested in subscribing to this fabulous software. I mean, I think those of you that watched us for the last year or two with the daily updates on the software know what an incredible job it can do. It found the low at June of this year, June 16th, virtually exactly. And uh, we're now approaching what should be a very important market top and we'll talk about that in a moment but first i wanted to let you know about the software there are a couple of options with the software one of the things i have not wanted to do all along is to make it a lifetime thing you buy the software and it's yours okay i didn't want to do that because for me the software is too valuable and we don't know about supporting it as time goes on, how far along that support would take effect. When, when someone's leasing it, obviously they're getting that support. But the leasing is going to be more difficult to effect now that TradeStation has made this decision. Anyway, if you'll give us some feedback, those of you that don't have the software, let us know that you're interested. Price will probably be for an outright sale of the software, I'm guessing now around $1,250, okay? And then it'll be yours for life. And what a fabulous piece of software it is. I think you will not regret it for the rest of your life. Um, if we continue with the monthly thing, that will probably remain the same. I believe it's $49.95, but check on our website to be sure about that. Okay, let's get to the markets. This is a chart that I've shown once or twice before, I have not shown it for a long, long time, however. And it's a monthly chart of U.S. securities prices from 1789 to March of 2013. No, I have not updated it. But because we're showing a long-term pattern, there is no reason why we have to update it. I'm trying to get my face out of the way here. Well, anyway, all that's missing here is the title. It says monthly chart of U.S. securities prices, 1789 to March of 2013. So the pattern I want to show you is I want you to look over the complete length of the chart here. It starts back in 1789, okay? So we're talking about 1889, 1989, 2013, and now over here somewhere, 2022. So well over 200 years. Eyeball this chart and tell me where you see the two largest declines. Mind you, this is a logarithmic chart. So a 50% decline back here will be the same as a 50% decline up here in terms of vertical distance, in terms of vertical magnitude, okay? I think it should be pretty easy for you eyeballing this chart to find the two largest declines on the chart. And here they are. This top leading into the March of 1842 bottom. This is a monthly chart now. 
And this decline, the great crash of 29 to 32, 1929 to 1932, taking place here, okay? The reason I show you these two is that from this bottom in 1842 to this bottom in 1932 is 1,084 months. So you can do two things with, with these cycle lows, okay? You can measure from here to here and say, okay, maybe there's far too little data to call this any kind of consistent cycle. There's only one iteration of it on the chart. But sometimes it's interesting to go that same exact iteration forward this 1,084 months into the future and see where it lands. And that's what we did. And guess where it lands? Here it is right here. 1,084 months from July of 1932 equals November of 2022. So we can make two things out of that. Actually, three things out of it. Number one, it may not mean anything at all. Big deal. There's an equal time period. There's a time period from here to here. Are you telling me that you think something important is going to happen that equivalent time period forward? The answer is, I don't know. But it's sure the type of thing that I look at. So that's number one. It has nothing to do with what's going to happen in the market. It's just a coincidence that we're now approaching the same time period as this 1842 to 1932 bottom, okay? Equivalent time-wise is November of 22. Now, if we had continued up in the market into November of 22, we're only in August now, three months to go, um, <clears throat> I would have said there may be a chance for a bottom to bottom to top count. But the fact that we began a 20% or 30% on the NASDAQ 100 decline going back to the end of last year, the beginning of this year, tells me we might also be looking for some kind of low, such as these two lows, dramatically lower. This on the Dow, this was a 90% decline, my friend. So I don't know exactly percentage-wise what this was, but you can see it's almost the same size as this decline right here, okay? So I wanted to show you this long-term chart to give you a picture of one of the two or three potentials that we're looking at. So those three potentials, again, it means nothing. I don't know how these little arrows got moved. Number two, it's going to show us a bottom to bottom to top count. Well, that's going to be very unusual now, seeing as we've come down significantly already. Unless we quickly rush to new highs going into November, then that's exactly what it might be doing. I think that's a much lesser probability. And the third one is that there could be some kind of bottom to bottom to bottom count. And if it's anything like these prior two declines, could be a huge decline in a relatively short period of time. Okay, let's take a look at the markets. And there are some interesting things to look at. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500, okay? And on the weekly charts, we have offsets two and a half weeks, five weeks, 10 weeks, 20 weeks, 39 to 40, 100 to 110, off, so on and so forth. But we've come into a situation now where we got a five week offset, nominal 10 week projection to the upside. And now what we're looking at here is a 10 week offset right here for a nominal 20 week projection. And let me go over with you quickly how this has arrived at, those of you that may be new to it, okay? Here's the bottom in June, 36, 36, 87. With this 10-week offset, the midpoint of the weekly bar crossed above the 10-week offset at exactly 39, 83. That was up 324.96 points from this low in June. So what you do with projections is you measure another 324.96 to the upside to give you your nominal 20-week upside projection, okay? And what do we have? 
notice how we were just a shade under that at uh, the end of the week this past week, closing at or near the highs of the week. So what are these other two numbers? Well, those are plus or minus 10%. Once we get a projection with a five-week, 10-week, 20-week offset, we write down that projection, which is right here. This is the exact projection. And then we allow for a plus or minus 10% margin of error. So if you multiply this 324 times 2, that would be the movement from the low to the projected high comes to just about 650 points. And so plus that's so 10% of that is 65 points. You add 65 points to this number, you get this, 4352. You subtract it and you get this, the lower side of the projection window. Okay. So now we have this projection. We like to look at confirmation of these from either the daily projection charts with the equivalent offsets or even going down to the hourly and 30-minute charts. But what we're going to do before we do that is we've drawn a rectangle up here for this projection, okay? Let's go out to the next longer offset. And this is very important. This is this week, okay? Let me go click, click. This is one week out, two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out. And this is the week ending September 9th. Four weeks out, around a month away. And look at the room we have in here. You can get all the way to the top end of the projection and still not give any higher projections. That is very, very important. If we get up here in the next week or two or even three, if we get up to the high end of the projection window, there's no other projection to get, and you should be looking for the possibility, if not probability, of a decline from there, and perhaps a big decline, okay? Now, based just on the weekly chart, you would think that we can't go or we shouldn't go any higher than 4352, okay? But that's on the weekly chart, and the weekly chart does projections differently from the daily charts. On the weekly charts, we take the exact distance from the low to the crossing, project it out into the future, and that's the, that's the projection plus or minus 10%. On the daily charts, we do this. Okay, here's the all-time high back here in early January. We've had this decline into the June low and this great rally. It's retraced half of the whole decline, okay? I think we told you back at the time that the, the rally could be surprisingly strong, and indeed it has surprised a lot of people. But look at the projection window on the daily chart. Now remember on the daily chart, it's not just one offset. It's two offsets, and let me show you those two offsets on the web chart with a continuum. Okay, here's the low in June back here in the bottom left. Here's the crossing, okay? This is the lowest crossing right here. If you consider moving the front or the back part of the continuum forward in time, there could have been a crossing down here. That crossing would have given you the low side of this projection window. You start moving the forward, the offset, until you reach the end of the continuum. That's right here. So you exited the upper side of the continuum right here. And if you measure from here down to here and move that projected upwards in magnitude, that gives you this upper side of the projection. And notice that it's quite a bit higher than the weekly projection, plus or minus 10%. This gives a 4487.78. I want you to be aware of the daily and of the weekly projections because we are now just about at the exact midpoint of the weekly projection, but there is still more room to go higher. One of the, <laughs> I, I can't call it a weakness because there are very few weaknesses to this projection software, but one of the things we have to deal with in the market is it's not going to give you the exact price of the turning point every time. <clears throat> but the reason it gives such a big window this time is that you have such a big vertical distance in the continuum, okay? So you get a crossing down here and as high as that, and you double that for the window, okay? Because you're going 
one half up and another half up. So this is a big window, but it's telling you with a pretty good degree of confidence that the market should not go higher than this. Certainly not without having a decline of some significance. Those of you that have been following us for some period of time know we have what we call loop projections. So you could get to the upper end of this projection window, get a sharp decline down, which would provide you with another offset line, and then another move up in a loop that would give even higher projections than this. But we don't worry about that now. Realistically, we're looking at this as being the high end of the projection on the daily projection charts. It's quite a bit higher than the high end of the weekly. That was the box we're looking at, and here it is on the chart. This is kind of a lot more messy chart. Let's do the same thing with the Wilshire 5000, the DWCF. Okay, so I don't switch back and forth and back and forth. This is the 20-week offset on DWCF. This is the projection window from the weekly chart, okay? And the setup is very much like the S&P setup. We're very close to the top of this window on the weekly chart. And if we get up there, there's no place else to go. You can't get higher projections, okay? So within the scope of our theory of how the market works, and believe you me, the scope of our theory works very well, you cannot get higher projections. You possibly on the daily chart, again, might be able to enlarge this box a little bit. But this is basically what your upside projection is, okay? And if you get up there, even exceed it by a little bit, for one, two, three, four weeks, the next four weeks, you're not going to get higher projections. That tells me there is an excellent chance of seeing a very significant market decline from somewhere within this box, okay? We know it's not the lower end because we're already up here. So between this price and this price, and maybe a little bit further on the dailies, there should be a very, very important top that is not going to give higher projection. Typically on the weekend update, we look at a few other things. It's a long update already, so we're not going to look at too much more. But let's take a look at Tesla. That's one that I know a lot of you follow. This is the 10-week offset on Tesla, okay? So we had this projection, we met it very nicely, have started down a little bit. The question is, on the next longer offset, will a move into this projection window give a higher price projection? And the answer is no. Our subscribers will recall, perhaps, that we showed you this chart last week, where we had gotten this upside projection. I called it into question because I said all we needed was a sideways week this week, and we would go below the offset line again, invalidating the projection, and that's exactly what we did, okay? So now, we can go back up into the top of this projection window for just like the other indexes, three or four weeks, and not get a higher projection. So we've got to be cautious about Tesla in here, because it also may be forming a top along with the market. I would remind our regular subscribers and those of you that are watching on YouTube this projection is still outstanding for Tesla. It's almost hard to believe, but it's calling for 117.34 to 322.10, okay? Now, several weeks ago back here, it looked like the prices might try to get regain themselves back above these offset lines. They have not been able to do it, especially last week when we had, for the first time in several weeks, almost two months, a down move in the midpoint for the week, okay? So all of a sudden, this potential projection comes into effect again. And we will be keeping a very close eye on what happens in the short term here, okay? I caution my regular subscribers all the time, don't look at something like this and run out and buy puts or sell short on Tesla on Monday morning, okay? Not based just on this. If you have some work you do yourself and this buttresses or solidifies your work, you're on your own. That's fine. We make no recommendations here. So I'm not telling you to go out and sell short for a move down to here. But I'm telling you, we're going to be watching very closely 
for what happens down here. I'd like to go over a whole bunch of other things, gold and Bitcoin or whatever, but this is a very long update as it stands right now. I would remind our own subscribers that when you play these updates back, you can speed them up one and a quarter, one and a half, to as much as 2x, two times the speed, watch the whole update in half the time, and it maintains intelligibility pretty well. If there's ever a point you don't get or you want to slow down, you just go down below in the settings and change the speed. So that's where we stand. A lot of things going on in the market, a lot of things going on with our software. I think there's a possibility, folks, that we are setting up for a dramatic decline in the market. I don't want to be too hasty here, though, because this thing could hold up into the next couple of weeks going into as far as I believe maybe early to mid-September. I would not think it's going to go any further than that, but let's judge that when we get into that time zone. I also think there's a pretty good chance that we get some kind of immediate short-term decline from here and come back up again into that early to mid-September time period. So that's what I'm looking for. I hope it's been helpful for you. Have yourselves a great weekend. We'll talk to our subscribers on Monday.